Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. What is a habit? A habit is something that we do without even thinking about it. A habit is something that is formed through repetition. You have repetitiously done something enough that it has just become part of you and you do it without even really paying any attention to the fact that you do it. However, if you don't do it, you miss it. I brush my teeth probably a minimum of four times a day. I don't think about it. I don't even really make a plan to brush my teeth. I don't have to leave myself notes to say brush your teeth. <laughs> But if I don't brush my teeth, my mouth just doesn't feel right. It has become a habit in my life. And we all have good habits, and we all have some bad habits, some things that we would really like to see changed in our life. I read that 40%, as much as 40% of everything that we do is done strictly out of habit. Now that's pretty amazing to think that 40% of everything that we do, we're just reacting. You know, you, you can have a habit of reacting to certain situations in certain ways. How many of you know somebody that you already know how they're going to react in a certain situation? As soon as that situation comes up, you know what, you know what they're going to do. You know why they do that? Because they have a habit of doing that. There's all kinds of habits. There's emotional habits. There's mental habits. There's physical habits. There's spiritual habits, social habits, financial habits. And so we want to talk about this whole area of habits because the truth is, if you can make a habit through repetition, then you can break a habit through repetition. You didn't do something right once to get a good habit. You didn't do something wrong once to get a bad habit. But if you did something enough times to get a bad habit, then if you do it right enough times, it will break that habit. Now they say, whoever they are, I never have figured out who they are yet, but we give them a lot of credit for everything. I don't know if you know it or not, but they pretty much run the world. They tell us how to dress. They tell us what the hairstyles are. They tell us, they tell us everything. I don't know who they are, but I think I finally figured out that we are they. And, uh, but different experts, and I'm not sure that any of us are experts, but it seems to have more weight if you say an expert said. So I'm going to say tonight that I heard one expert say in 21 days you can make or break a habit. I've heard another one say 30 days. I see that work in my life in many instances. Sometimes it takes longer than that. But the point is, is you got to start somewhere. And I say there's no time like the present. No, how many of you have been putting something off long enough and it's now time to confront it and get on the other side of it? Come on, anybody? You've been putting up with it long enough. Can I tell you something? Bad habits are your enemy. Oh, no, they're not. They're just a bad habit. No, they're keeping you from being the best person that you can be. And you're probably never going to get over them until you treat them like an enemy and act like they're a thief stealing the best life that Jesus has already purchased for you through the sacrifice of his blood. Amen? We all want good habits. There's not one person in here that wouldn't say, oh, yes, Joyce, I want good habits. But not everybody is willing to work. Work, 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 work. Not everybody is willing to work toward having them. We all would love to just have good habits downloaded on us, just like you can download new software into your computer. But you can't download a victory. <laughs> you can't download a new habit. I think I said on TV this week that you can drive through and get everything drive through, but you can't get a drive through breakthrough. <laughs> I don't watch my own program much, but I did watch it one day this week. And I remember that I said that, see, so. Good habits have the power to defeat bad habits. And I want to stress this thing about focusing on the good thing you want to do and stop focusing 
on the bad thing that you don't want to do. And I know that's a huge problem. We think about the bad thing we're doing as if it's keeping us from doing the good thing we want to do. So we think if we can defeat the bad thing, then maybe we can be good. But the truth of the matter is, is you overcome evil with good. You overcome evil with good has the power to overcome evil. A good habit has the power to drive the bad habit out of your life. Let me just give you one example. You can focus on, I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight. I need to be on a diet, a diet, a diet. Yes, a diet, a diet, a diet. <laughs> you can focus on that and focus on that. And somebody may disagree with me, but I think when you have a diet mentality, all it does is make you want to eat. <laughs> you just have food on your mind all the time, and you're hungry all the time. So I'm not going to tell you to think about going on a diet. I'm going to tell you to focus on eating healthy. Think about the foods that are good for you. Think about the foods that would more or less be ones that God had created. Think about them and decide you're going to be healthy. Don't focus on being on a diet. Think about being healthy. Make good choices. And by doing that, you will be breaking the habit that you have that is causing you to think you need to be on a diet. How many of you have been on enough diets in your life to have lost a thousand pounds? <laughs> How, who's here that's lost at least 200 pounds and gained it all back throughout your life? Not at one time, but I mean over a court, you know. Well, I think I might be there, you know. And a long time ago, I had to get over this diet mentality because what I did was I just constantly had my mind on food. So now I just eat healthy. I've learned a lot about health and a lot about nutrition and make a lot of good choices. Not every choice is good. Sometimes I allow myself something on purpose just so I've got a little wiggle room in my life. But I don't wiggle so much that I can't wiggle into my pants. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Galatians 5.16 But I say walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit Responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit Now what does it mean to be guided by the Spirit? Well I'll give you one hint Anytime you say I know I shouldn't do this but I know I should clean the house today but I know I should get this garage cleaned up, but I know I need to pay my bills today because if I don't, they're going to be late, but I know I should exercise, but <laughs> we're just trying to help you get rid of your butt. <laughs> yeah. And I mean that in the right way. <laughs> You don't have to take everything I say that way. I, I was totally pure-hearted when I said that. Well, maybe not totally, but <laughs> I cannot tell a lie. So what happens is when we know we shouldn't do something or we know we should do something, that's the Holy Spirit prompting us to do the right thing. Don't tell me you don't know how to hear from God. You hear from God all the time, but he doesn't speak to you through the ears on your head most of the time. He prompts you, just little promptings, just little. You know, they have a clock right here, a big one, that's supposed to prompt me to quit preaching after one hour. And I do it now, but years ago, when I first started doing this, they had cassette tapes, and they were, they were 60 minutes long. Or like maybe 70 minutes, 75, something like that. And if you went over that, then people didn't get the rest of the message. So I was forever selling people teachings that they didn't have any end on. Because I did not obey the promptings of the clock. Back then we didn't have a clock. They held up signs for me. 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then I'd just say, hang it all, and I'd just keep preaching. Until I started getting enough complaints. I've listened to this whole teaching. I'm so frustrated because I, now I don't know how it ends. I don't know the answer. So me, now here you're going to get something. Me not following the promptings of the Holy Spirit was giving other people problems.
I was doing what I wanted to do. But it was keeping even our ministry from presenting the best to people because I wasn't finishing what I started. So always remember that if you don't follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit, you're not only cheating your help yourself, but you're going to cheat somebody else. I want to go over these two scriptures again. Romans 12, 21. Well, we'll do this one since they have it up there. <laughs> but I say walk and live habitually. How many of you see habitually? That means that you can form a habit of walking in the Spirit. <laughs> if, if you have a habit of overriding the Holy Spirit and just doing what you want to anyway, then it's a habit. And we may think we get by with it, but really we don't. Not really. Because there's something that God's trying to lead us into or out of that's going to be better for us than what we have. But if we ignore Him, then we're never going to have it. That doesn't mean God won't love us. It doesn't even necessarily mean, it doesn't mean we're not going to go to, to heaven. We're not saved because of our great choices all the time. We're saved by what He did for us on the cross. But we need to learn to habitually follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And it is so much fun to be a Christian when you learn to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit for you as an individual. It becomes so much fun because you never know on any day when you give, get up what God's going to come up with. I mean, you just never know. You know when God laughs? When we make a plan. <laughs> to God, that is hysterical. There they go. They got their plan for the day again. Watch this. <laughs> Amen. And then Romans 12, 21, one of my very favorite scriptures. We overcome. Do not let yourself be overcome by evil, but overcome and master evil with good. Now, let's just take a little liberty here and say this a different way. Do not let yourself be overcome by bad habits, but overcome and master bad habits with good habits. Does everybody here tonight want to have better habits? Does anybody here have some bad habits yes. that you want to get rid of? All right, we're on our way. Now, Hebrews 12, 2, one more scripture that kind of proves what I'm talking about here, says, looking away from all that will distract unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Okay, so that's all we're going to read. So we're going we're gonna to start out in faith here. Asking God to birth a new thing in our life by helping us make better habits. And now the scripture is telling us, looking away from the bad thing that would distract you and look at Jesus, who is not only the author, but the finisher of your faith. So I really believe that there may be, you know, you might feel like I've got 50 bad habits. Well, you might only have to develop five or six really good ones. And it might drive all 50 of those bad ones out of your life. Like I said tonight, I'm going to tell you the one main habit. What is it? I'm not going to tell you yet. <laughs> it's not time to do that. The more we focus on what's wrong, the more we produce what's wrong. Because what you focus on becomes bigger to you than anything else in your life. Never say you don't have any self-control. And never say you hate discipline. Now, I'm telling you from the get-go, if you're going to start trying to make good habits and break some bad habits, never say, never say, I hate discipline. And never say, I don't have any self-control. Because the truth is, discipline is your friend, not your enemy. Discipline is a tool that God has given us that will help us be all that we say we want to be. It doesn't have to be your master. Discipline doesn't have to become a law that says every time you must do this certain thing this certain way, but we have to be able to say yes to God and no to self, and very often that requires discipline. No discipline for the present seems joyous. Nevertheless, later on, 
You say, well, Joyce, I was kind of hoping you'd talk about prosperity tonight. I have some financial problems. <laughs> now, don't make me come out there and get you. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you have financial problems, how many of you know that it's probably partially because of lack of discipline? <laughs> Do I have any people that tell the truth in here tonight? How many of you know? Well, it's not my fault. Well, we, gonna, we got a habit for that, too, so just hang around. Farming the habit of taking responsibility for your own messes. Ooh, you better come to every session. I think I feel it. I think I can feel it. Making good habits and breaking bad habits. You want me to read you all the chapters? Let me just, let me just tell you. The anatomy of a habit. Get started now. The God habit. Breaking bad habits. How, habits of, how words and thoughts affect habits. The habit of being decisive. Healthy habits. The happy habit. The habit of faith. The habit of excellence. The habit of being responsible. The habit of generosity. The hurry habit. Emotional habits. The confidence habit. The habit of adding value to others. The habit of discipline. How many of you think you need them all? Me too. I'm glad I'm here. Amen. <laughs> You know, normally nothing good happens accidentally. <laughs> you can catch disease, but you can't catch health. Very simple principle. All right, now it's very important that you see yourself and begin to believe that you have the fruit of self-control in your life and that God has given you a friend called discipline. So don't ever say, I don't have any self-control. I just can't control myself. If I eat one cookie, I got to eat a dozen. I mean, for crying out loud. You are born again, full of the Holy Ghost, and you tell me you cannot resist a cookie? You are trying to cast out devils and you don't have authority over a cookie? I rebuke you, Satan. I am a child of God, and I will not put up with that. And then you go by the cookie. <laughs> you say, well, Joyce, tell me, what is my problem? <laughs> you don't know how to think. That's why I've got so many messages and books on thinking and can't preach a message without talking about thinking because our behavior follows our thoughts. Yeah. Now, in Romans 6, verse 2, it says that we're dead to sin. Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Everybody say, I am dead to sin. Dead to sin. You know what it means to be dead to sin? It means you no longer have a relationship with it. When you're dead, you don't have a relationship with anything. <laughs> Nothing. All relationships end for the dead person. You no longer have a relationship with food. You don't have a relationship with shopping. No relationship with people. You're dead. So he says we're dead to sin. So that means that you have no relationship with all these bad habits that you've let control you. You need to just start saying to them, I have no relationship with you. You have no authority over me. I'm dead to you. You say, but I'm not. But I'm telling you, you are. You say, I'm not. I say, yes, you are. You say, no, I'm not. I say, yes, you are. You say, no, I'm not. <laughs> well, you know what? You are spiritually. You are a spirit. You have a soul. <laughs> you live in a body. You're not just a body. It's your body and your soul that gets addicted to things and gets bad habits. Your spirit is free, except that we let the soul oppress it. We let the soul choke it out and crowd it out. And if we get full enough of the Word, the Word of God is food for your spirit, just like the food that you eat keeps you healthy in your body. The Word of God is not only food for your spirit, but it also will save your soul. 
James 1 says, when you approach the word with meekness and you receive it, it has the power to save your soul. You know what the word's done for me? It has saved me emotionally. I'm not wounded and hurt anymore. I don't act like a maniac all the time because I've got all these wounds in my life from the way that I was raised. The Word has saved my mind. It's renewed my mind. It's taught me how to do what I'm telling you tonight. You begin by thinking, God says I'm dead to sin, and I am dead to sin. This has no authority over me. It has no power over me. And I, with the help of God, am going to form good habits so I can be everything that God wants me to be. Now, in verse 11, Romans 6, 11, remember verse 2 says we're dead to sin. And then Romans 6, verse 11 says, even so, consider yourself dead to sin. The word consider is a process of thinking. So we might as well just say, even so, think of yourself as someone who is dead to sin and your relationship to it is broken, but see yourself as alive to God living in unbroken fellowship with Jesus Christ. Somebody give God praise. There's addictions in many areas, drugs, alcohol, smoking, shopping, eating disorders. People cut themselves, they're addicted to pornography other sexual addictions, OCD disorders, which is obsessive compulsive disorders. You know what I believe? I believe that any addiction or obsession began with a habit. And you know how habits get started? Especially if we're talking about bad habits. We're doing something once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and now all of a sudden, and you have this thought, this is getting out of hand. Th this is getting out of hand. 1 Peter 5, 8. I love it. Be well balanced for your adversary the devil roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The Bible says that we need to resist him at his onset. So what would happen if when we get that little thing from God, this is getting out of hand, you're doing this too much, you need to cut back. What would happen if we would take that as a warning signal? Now God's telling me that I'm about to get myself in trouble. And stop right then, then it wouldn't be hard. Then there would be no addiction to break. No, going through all the stuff we have to go through to get over the things. No spending five years trying to get out of debt because you spent a year getting in debt. <laughs> How many of you know that it's easier to gain weight than it is to lose it? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Anybody who has an addiction... Or some kind of an obsession in your life. Something that you would say, I just cannot control this. There was a time, now listen to me, there was a time in your life when you could have. And you didn't. And I'm only telling you this because going forward, I don't want you focusing on everything you did wrong in the past. We're closing the door on that. We're not going to live in regrets. Regret does not do anything except steal the energy that you need to have a victory. Regret doesn't do anything. Doesn't help anything. Dave is wonderful at not regretting things. <laughs> well, something happened the other day, and I said, oh, I wish that we would have done that years ago. And he said, not going to regret it. And it is. It's just a waste of time. Regretting anything is a waste of time. It just steals all your, oh, I regret the way I've lived. And I regret, I regret that I let myself get in debt. And I regret that I let myself, and I regret, and I regret. Because, well... I'm not saying not to be sorry that you did the wrong thing, but, but you need to be sorry and then go on. I'm encouraging you to focus on the good thing that you want to do and stop, big S-T-O-P, focusing on the bad thing you don't want to do. The Bible says in Romans 12, 21, don't let yourself be overcome by evil, but overcome and master evil with good. So that means that we can 
overcome bad habits by focusing on making good habits.